I listened to a woman this morning who just annoyed me because of the choices she made. Love is blind, but it doesn't have to be stupid. Wait until you see what today's couple did to land themselves here in divorce court. Divorce court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Jennifer Edwards and Michael Vanderlyn. The two of you have been together for three years, married for 10 months, but you're currently separated. Ms. Edwards, you're seeking a significant amount of money for an unpaid personal loan, and uh, you will tell me about that momentarily. But before we get there, I'm going to start with you, Ms. Edwards. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why, after only 10 months of marriage, are you here in divorce court? Well, Your Honor, I believe that this man has taken advantage of me. Uh, he swept me off my, my feet the first time we met. He was passionate, caring, generous, a good dad. And that's exactly what I was looking for, to have a family. Now, how him. long did it take for you to see all of these qualities in him? Oh, it was only the first three months we were together. The first three months? Yes, Your Honor. You know, anybody can be well-behaved for 90 days. You, you, you know what I mean? Minutes. I mean, it, usually when someone says and does all the right things, that's not magic. That's practice. <laughs> you know what I mean? They know what they're doing. Just saying. Not saying that about you, because I don't know you. But well, I'm just I saying was... in general. When women get swept, that's usually what they get swept with. Practice. And I was romantic, too, Your Honor. So, Mr. Vandalin, why don't you tell me what happened in the beginning of the relationship, what you saw. In the beginning of the relationship, everything was great from getting along, always going on trips. She always was very romantic, um, which that's what I was looking for in, in a marriage. Mm -hmm. What I liked is she never knew the word no, which I liked that. Because in, in, in what regard? Is she always up for anything? Always up for anything. Whatever I wanted to do, it was always it was always good. It was always okay. Let's do that. Let's do this. Um, going on a trip without saying anything. Um, she was willing to pay, which that was unusual for me. I was. She was willing to pay for everything. Pretty much at that at, at in the very beginning, yes. Were you working? I was working. I was landscaping. Why were you willing to pay for everything? I wasn't willing to pay for everything. I had to pay for everything because the money that he got from work, he had to pay his bills with, so I don't know that where wasn't he's getting it, That wasn't traveling. in the beginning. Your Honor, that wasn't in the beginning. In the beginning, she was willing to pay, and I was, and I was liking that because I was tired of always having to pay on previous relationships. I disagree. I don't know how I'm willing to pay when I'm a single mom working 40 hours a week with two children at home. I, you I weren't know willing to pay. He, he, it's not like he had a gun to your head. No. You made a decision that in order to do what you wanted to do, and, and you know, it, it's probably sexist on my part, you know, like a, doing the sugar mama thing, but you'd have to be willing to pay because he didn't make you pay. I would say I was willing to go on the vacations. I wanted to go on the vacations. I wanted to get out of town enjoy ourselves without the kids. As a single mom, could you really afford that? No, not at all. If she couldn't afford it, then why does she continue to do that in the first part of her relationship? Now, later on in the relationship, I, it's like I made, I made up for her paying the first couple of times because and later when on you, in the relationship. What do you say? What do you mean you made up for it? You well, started paying for things? Yeah, I started paying for everything later on because she lost her job and got unemployment. So for like that, at eight, ten months, mm -hmm. I was paying for everything. Mm -hmm. Let me ask and you this, Mr. Vanderlyn. How was it you were comfortable allowing a, a, a single mother of two children who's, 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 who's working as a receptionist, how did you feel comfortable taking her money when you knew she had two kids at home she was trying to support? As long as I felt that she had, she wouldn't spend the money if she didn't have it. Well, obviously she did, and she was able to take care of the kids at that time, so I didn't think it was a big deal. When yeah. did things start to go south, Ms. Edwards? About six months into our relationship. What happened? He stopped working just because he got bored at a job. But, Your Honor, it wasn't Hang because... on, hang on, hang on. I'll get back to you. He got bored at his job, a good job that he was able to make a 401k, steady 40 hours a week, 
but he, he was tired of the repetition. He now, was that six it. months into the marriage or was that six months into the relationship? Six months into the relationship. So you were still unmarried, you weren't married we at were the time? We were not married at that were time. Were you living together at the time? We had been living together. We moved in together about three months after we had gotten together. And he moved in with me because I had the two kids and he had he was living with somebody and it wasn't possible for me and the kids to move in there. So he moved into a townhouse that I had already been renting with okay. my kids. Mr. Vanderlyn, what do you have to say about your uh, employment status? Is that what occurred? No, that's not what occurred. The deal is I, I, I enjoyed working where I was working. I was configuring computers. Right. But but the situation was I got I got tired of it and I was making the same amount of money doing the same thing over and over and over again so it was how long had you had the job uh, I had had that job for probably three months but I got tired of it though and I wasn't learning anything so I was like you know what I'm gonna find something better I'm gonna find something that pays me more money and which I did but he quit before he found something he didn't have a plan. but but I had another job in the first week I had another Within a job. Within week, you had a job. Week. Yes, I did. So it wasn't like it wasn't like her and her situation, where she'd be unemployed and collect unemployment for eight months. And I kept telling her all through that I said, "You better look for a job now." And no, she didn't want to do that. She just, "Oh, I'm just going to collect my money, and then we're just going to go on. We're just, we'll, we'll be all right." But, but in, in the meantime, but in the meantime, I've already had another job, mm -hmm. and I was already working, and I was still helping pay the majority of the bills. Mm -hmm. That is incorrect. What happened? I was receiving unemployment. I was also receiving child support and alimony. I was still paying all the bills. No, she wasn't paying all the bills. She was paying some of the bills. You she mean was... you were getting child support, unemployment, and alimony, and you got some other dude in the house, and you traveling him around? Wow. Yes. Neither one of you has a moral compass. I, no wonder you couldn't get anywhere. She has a problem with keeping the checkbook up all the time. She was constantly going out to eat all the time. How did you get so far behind that you had a, a shutoff notice when you have so many sources of income? Have you been living together for years but find that splitting up is as complicated as getting a divorce? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. Ms. Edwards, you say that Mr. Vanderlyn likes to live the high life. What do you mean by that? He goes out and buys $100 pair of tennis shoes, $100 pair of shoes, but yet he won't pay the electric bill or the cable bill because that's something that we don't need. I no, mean, no, Your Honor, that, that's incorrect. Let me, let, let, let me correct that. Okay. Situation was, she came one time when we were sitting in the kitchen, and she said, hey, we have a shutoff notice, an electric bill. Right. This needs to be, be paid. The problem is, she has a problem with keeping the checkbook up all the time. So for a while, I had to take her checkbook, and I had to keep it. But she got mad because then at that point, I was controlling the money situation and, and all that, and she didn't like that. So she, what, what was going on, she was constantly going out to eat all the time, taking the kids out to eat every day instead of wanting to cook a meal at home. She's always wanting to, always wanting to cook, you know, or, you know, take the, take the kids out to eat and whatnot. How did and, you, let me ask you this, though. How did you get so far behind that you had a, a shutoff notice when you have so many sources of income, unemployment, alimony, child support, that's to keep the lights on for your kids? Where was your money going? It was going to pay the bills. There was more, the, the rent, I paid, I paid all the rent. I was paying my car payment. I was paying utilities. Was she paying all that and you weren't contributing? I was contributing to it. And I also was taking that money for our trips. He was not contributing to that. Yeah, yeah. You can't, if you're getting shut off notices on your lights, you can't afford trips. She was in charge of the, of the, of the, of the electric, so I thought it was being paid. She comes to me and says, hey, we need to pay this. And I'm like, well, wait a minute. The, why isn't this being paid? She's like, well, I haven't been keeping up on a checkbook. So we had to go to a church. That's not true. Yeah, it is. You we had, had to go to a church to, for what? We had to go to some church, and we had to get help with paying a bill paying the electric bill. That's not true. He went to the church to help pay for his car repairs. No, that was another That's that why was he went to time. the church. Never went to church to pay for electricity Your or Honor, to buy food or anything like that. 
She's lying. She's lying Ooh. about that. I mean, well, you, neither one of you looking good at this juncture. I, I, I must say, neither one of you looking good at this juncture. Let me get, let, let me move on to something else because we could be talking about this money all day long, Mr. Vanderlyn and Ms. Edwards. You say that there is some dissension between the two of you with respect to the manner uh, in which you raise your children. Why, why don't you tell me about that? He doesn't like how I discipline my kids. I, I'm, I would admit I am a little easy on them. Uh, after, You're a little lenient? I'm a little lenient on them, yes. And uh, for reasons that I am like that is because of the divorce that I had mm -hmm. with my first marriage. Uh -huh. And I kind of felt like I kind of maybe took, took too much away from them. So I was a little lenient. And it, it had gotten a little bit out of hand because I didn't take control when I needed to take control. But coming, him parenting, when his kids aren't even with him and telling me how to parent, I, I'm just, I, I can't do that. You're not comfortable with it. I'm going to say something to both of you. Number one, Ms. Edwards, I can understand, and a, and a lot of people feel this way. When they get divorced, it's a very difficult time for the children. Right. And they respond by be, be becoming lenient because you think they've suffered enough. Yes. But what you're doing is kids want limits. Kids do better when there is structure. And even if there has been a change in circumstance, leniency does not make them happier. It makes them louder and it makes them out of control, but it doesn't make them happier. Mr. Vanderlyn, you got to back up when they're, they're not your children. Do you see what I'm saying? She has to take the lead on the discipline because they're not your kids. I thought this last time was going to be different. I thought that we were actually a real family that he would want to change and he would want to stay. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Divorce Court. You say Mr. Vanderlyn is unstable. What do you mean by that? Just from going from job to job when he gets bored, he's been in three different states since we've been together. Does he move everybody with him? Oh, no. He just moves by himself. He goes. He, he has asked me to go. He has asked me to go down to Tennessee with him. And at first, I had thought about moving down there and being a family, being with all the kids. But then I thought about my kids and their father and would I want to take my kids away from their father and I just I at that at the time I just didn't think it, it was right for me to do that to them. Mr. Mr. Vanderlyn are you a bit of a wanderer or do you get bored easily and need to change jobs and states? Well the deal is I do get a little bit bored but that's not the reason why I change jobs. The reason why I change jobs is because I want to better myself. Mm -hmm. I want to go somewhere I'm a very motivated person. I move just because if I find something better and it's, and it's going to better my life, then I'm willing to take a chance and I'm willing to move somewhere to, to, to get a better opportunity. Do you discuss it? Now, once you're married, now when you're single, that's cool. But once you're married, don't you think you have to sit down, have a conversation, and make a decision jointly as to where you're going to live and what's, what's the best thing, not just for you and your advancement, but for the entire family? But we wasn't, we wasn't married at the time that I'm, that I'm, that I'm moving gotcha. around up until, up until just recently after we had got married. Got you. Seeing all that about him during the time, the three years that you're dating, why marry him? I thought this last time was going to be different. I thought that after everything that we have discussed and everything that we had been through, we were still together and that this was going to make a difference if we were actually a real family, that he would want to change and he would want to stay with us and just have a regular, regular paying job, not have to always better himself or try to get... Did he say that to you? Did he say, let's get married? I will be this, 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 and this? Or did you just assume that the state of marriage would change the person you knew him to be? I thought the state of marriage would change him to be the person that I wanted him to be. 
We women are crazy with that nonsense. We need to stop it. Marriage doesn't change people. It just doesn't. It changes the rules of conduct of what is appropriate and not appropriate. But when you're married, you all of a sudden don't, you, you, you get the guy that you pick, not the one you hope he'll become. And all of this imaginary stuff that we got going on, I'm going to get that ring. It's going to be a fairy tale. It's going to work out. He's going to want to be Mr. Perfect. You know, Ward Cleaver is crazy. And we need to get over it, please. But There's always a whole lot going on in divorce court that people want to talk about. If you have something you want to say, join us on Twitter at Divorce Court or jump on our Facebook page and see what everybody's talking about on there. Sometimes you people get heated. Don't miss it. Is there something you wanted to say briefly? Yes, Your Honor. The, the, the deal was when we got married, I had explained to her that the only reason why I'm going to come back after I moved back to or after I moved to California is if you move out here with me because there's more opportunities out mm. in California, and that's just what I want to do. I had a lot more. I get it. I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay. So. Ms. Uh, Edwards, you are seeking $9,137.36, $500 in an unpaid personal loan, and $8,637.36 balance due on an unpaid car loan. Please explain that to me. About three months into our relationship, he asked me to get a car loan for him because he couldn't get it on his own. And so I decided, well, he's going to need a car to get back and forth to work to mm -hmm. have money to pay the bills. So I decided to get it for him. But he was going to be responsible for making the payments on the car and the insurance on the car. That was going to be his car. I was just getting it in my name. Right. For about a year, he paid the loan and he paid the insurance. Then again, he, lost, he went from job to job and couldn't make the payments on the car anymore. The car got repossessed. They took me to court because, again, it's in my name. It's against me. Sure. Do you have any, any paperwork demonstrating how much you owe and a, if, if you have a judgment against you? I have a promissory note from Mike that he signed to make the payments on the car. I'm going to show you all of this in a moment just to make sure you know what we're talking about, but I have Thank to take you, a look Anna. at it quick. We've got a motion for summary disposition signed by the judge. You do have a judgment against you in the amount of $8,837.36. Mr. Vanderlyn, I'm giving you an opportunity to review this. And as you are reviewing it, would you like to tell me your side of that story? Um, yes, I would. Uh, she is correct as far as uh, getting me the car and, and, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, and I do agree that I do owe for the vehicle, but it should have never been repossessed. Mm -hmm. if, if thinking that I was only a few days late on the payment and she knew that it was in her name, mm -hmm. then she should have at least said, hey, look, I'm going to cover it. I know that you're going to have it because you have a job. But she didn't want to do that. So she automatically just, just let it go. That I believe that it never would have been repossessed, like I said. If she just would have just paid it, I would have paid her back. I didn't but have now it come, But now it come to this where it got repossessed and now I don't have a car. Right. And now I've got to still pay for it. So right. I am a little I am a little irritated about that. Yeah, well, you can be irritated all you want to, but if you if you sign a promissory note saying you owe money for a car, the fact that you didn't have enough money to pay on the car note and got repossessed is on you. It doesn't obligate her to cover you so you won't have a problem. That's a problem that you created for her. I didn't hear anything about the $500 unpaid personal loan, so I don't know anything about that. But I will award her $8,637.36. And let me say this before I leave. You are a woman with children. You can't run around chasing romance with whomever and, and spending money like that, like, you know, you found the love in your life and all that kind of stuff. You need to grow up and be grown, do motherly things. All that kind of stuff is over with. You can find somebody and do some things, but don't ever put that before your children. And when your lights are going off because you guys are on going on trips, that's a bad thing. And you took advantage of a woman who was raising kids and you took her money from her so she couldn't put her money where you should. Shame on you as well. Judgment in favor of Ms. Edwards. It is so ordered.
Both of these people made me angry. She was taking food out of her kid's mouth to chase some romantic dream, and he was taking money from a woman he knew was single and trying to support two kids. Call us at 1-877-311-2222.